so this is our data here we have got seven different samples containing six different species abundance so here you can see in sample one there are uh, 46 individual subspecies 1, 72 in individual subspecies 2 and so on and so forth and totally in sample 1 there are 289 individuals of different different species. So in order to make you understand this thing in a better way uh, I have converted this count or abundance into percentage. So for that uh, what I have done is if you take a look you can see there are 46 individuals of species 1 in sample 1 so to convert it into percentage composition you just have to divide the number of individuals by the total number of individuals in that particular sample and multiply it by 100 so I have got 15.91 percentage which means uh, in sample 1 15.91 percentage is composed of species 1. Similarly, uh, in sample 1, 24.91% uh, is composed of species 2. So I have converted all these count values into percentage composition for creating this uh, chart. So here you can see, for example, in the case of sample 1, we got the value as 15.91 percentage of species 1 in sample 1. So if you take a look here you can see 15.191 percentage of species 1 which is represented in blue color. Then species 2 in black or gray color you can see all six species are represented here in different different colors so you can see their composition. Uh, and one more thing. Uh, some of the species which are present in one sample are, might be absent in the other. For example, if you take a look at sample 6, you can see there are no species 5 which is represented by the yellow color. But if you take sample 1, you can see almost all species are present in it. And one more thing, the most important thing is that uh, if you take a look at sample 2 and sample 3, I have highlighted here you can see they are very similar in terms of their species composition uh, you can see the percentage of species 1 in both samples are approximately equal, equal but similar and if you consider species 2 yeah, they are almost equal in terms of their composition and you can see the species 3 and species 4 species 5 and species 6 so in the case of these two samples you can see all the species are present in both of these samples and apart from that their composition is so similar by the term composition I meant that their count is very similar in both samples so in that case when you uh, convert this concept of similarity into an NMDS plot you can see samples which are similar in terms of species composition can be seen clustered together they are so close to each other right so this is the basic logic of an NMDS plot samples which are similar in terms of their species composition will be closer to one another and some samples which are quite different will be further apart for example if you take the if you take sample 6 and sample 5 you can see the percentage composition of different species is very different see you can see there is almost 5 percentage of species 1 in sample 5 but in sample 6 you can see the percentage uh, is as much as 40 I guess so and this number of species 2 is entirely different and you can see in sample 5 there are no green colored I mean species 3 which is in green color there is no species 3 in sample 5 so there is a big difference because one sample one species is entirely absent in sample 5 which is present in sample 6 so when we take a look at look at the position of these two S5 and S6 samples you can see S5 and S6 are 
very farther apart. The reason is they are very dissimilar in terms of their species composition and sample and you can see sample 1 and sample 7 are not so far away but they are uh, situated at a particular distance so that is so if you look at the distance between these samples closer to samples are they will be very similar in terms of their species composition that's the basic underlying uh, fact about an NMDS plot and one more thing these axes they are meaningless they are just arbitrary you don't have to look at it so if you want to just uh, study the similarity between your samples in terms of species composition you just have to look at the distance between these samples so samples which are closer together will be very similar in terms of their species composition that's it So now let's see how to implement uh, NMDS using R. So before that you need to load two libraries which are vegan and tidyverse. And after that you need to set the seed for reproducibility. Then you can start. You can load your data, the species abundance data. So I'm going to load it from uh, here. It's in my desktop I think okay and here it goes so you have to save your excel file in csv format then only you can import it into excel otherwise it won't work so after importing let's take a look at our uh, data frame so here you can see the all seven samples and the abundance of species in each samples but when you perform an NMDS, you are not going to need uh, all columns. So here you are going to need only the species, the columns which uh, contain the species abundance data. So from here, species 1 to species 6, we are going to need. So we will remove this sample column and total column from this data frame. For that we can subset using this code. So I am going to choose all rows and columns from 2 to 7 which means species 1 to species 6 I'm running the code so now our NMDS data is ready you can see, see here it contains only species abundance data so after that we can perform the NMDS using the function called meta MDS which comes from vegan library so here i'm going to use breakout's distance measure because whenever you are dealing with species data or count data specifically uh, you're going to use breakout's in distance measure but in other cases when you are having continuous data uh, you can go for euclidean distance and pca pcoa and all here anyway we'll be using breakout's and if you run this code you will get your NMDS results which will be stored in this variable and we can you can if you want to see the basic plot you can take a look at it but it's not that good you are not sure what's going on here so everything is mixed up so we are not going to use this plot instead we will plot our NMDS result using ggplot uh, Next thing is uh, before coming to ggplot, I would like to show you about stress plot. It's also called shepherd stress plot. So if you look at the stress plot, our model, you can see uh, this basically tells us the goodness of fit of our model. You can see these blue circles, right? So uh, if all of these circles fall exactly on this line, then we will be having a very low stress value. Lower the stress value, better our NMDS model uh, becomes. So here a few values are out of the line. Anyway, let's look at the stress value. You can access the stress value using this code. NMDS result dollar sign stress. So here it goes. This is going to be a stress value 0.061. So now, how do we decide whether uh, the stress value is good, bad, or poor? 
For that, we will, as a rule of thumb, uh, if the stress value is greater than 0 0.2, it indicates a poor fit. And if the stress value is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.1, it indicates a good fit. And if it is below 0 0.05, it's considered excellent. But in most cases, you are not going to get an excellent or good fit. You might get, uh, perhaps if your sample number of samples are very uh, few, as happened in our case, we had only seven samples, so it's very likely that we will get a good or excellent fit. That's right, we got 0 0.06, uh, which comes here in this range, so our model was good. So after determining the stress value, we can further look into ggplot. So before, so in order to plot using ggplot function, you have to have your x and y axis. So using this code, we will extract the x and y axis MTS in a data frame format. So if I run this code, you can see this is going to be your x and y axis and MTS1 and an MTS2. So we are going to give this uh, column name here and MTS1 and MTS2 then we'll get a uh, gg jump point then you need to label your points right you should name your dots for example uh, this dot should be named here i have named sample one sample two so now we will just put one two three uh, for that you need i'm going to use the raw names of my nmts data which is i'll show you so the raw names of my NMTS data. These are going to be the raw names 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are going to be our sample names. And finally, you can uh, specify the value of nudge X and nudge Y in order to prevent the overlapping of dots and the labels. If you don't put this, your the labels will be exactly on your dots so you have to prevent it and finally i'm using my favorite black and white theme so now let's run it yeah we have got our nmds model let's take a closer look so as we have seen before the sample 2 and sample 3 sample 2 and sample 3 here which was so similar in terms of their species composition um, have been clustered together here and uh, you might be wondering uh, this one looks so colorful but here it doesn't so what I had done was I exported this uh, NMDS model or plot into a software called Inkscape this one is very useful you can uh, modify your plots add colors and do a lot of editing using this uh, I would suggest you to learn this. If you learn this, uh, you can produce some publication quality materials like plots, diagrams, graphs and all. So let's get back to R. So this is basically what an MDS does. You can assess the similarity between your samples in terms of species composition here as I had given in the example. But let it be something else. It it not necessarily to be species composition you can try it out with many many different types of data so thanks for watching